What is up? This is Josh McDarris with a fun and exciting Photoshop tutorial. We're working in Adobe Photoshop CC 2018 and today we're going to look at every single tool in the toolbar. Now if you want to follow along, we're going to go ahead and go to Window, Workspace, make sure you're on Essentials, and then you can also go ahead and reset Essentials just to make sure we're on the same page. And I like to work a little bit differently, at least for today. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take layers and I'm just going to grab it and drag it over here and just kind of minimize everything else like so. And the first tool we're of course going to look at is the move tool or V on the keyboard. That's the uh, default shortcut. And what we can do with the move tool is if we have an unlocked layer, which in this case, this layer is locked. So we're going to unlock that. We can grab this layer and just kind of drag it around. Simple as that. Probably the most used tool in Photoshop, the move tool. Next, we're going to look at the artboard tool. So you just hold down on the move tool icon and you select the next one down, artboard. And we're going to drag, click and drag on our canvas. And you say it's made a new artboard. Now, what's the point of an artboard? Well, you can actually create more artboards and just kind of make them go on forever. And the point of an artboard is just to have different designs or photos in the same canvas. So you have one Photoshop file and you can have all kinds of different comps in that Photoshop file. So that's a feature that was brought over from Illustrator and it can be very handy if you're doing multiple variations on the same project. Next, we're going to go down to the rectangular marquee tool or M on your keyboard. And what we can do with that is we can just click and drag and make a selection. We can go and we can create a new layer via copy. We can create a new layer via cut, which if we do that and hide that new layer, you can see we just completely cut that out. Or we can hide the other layer and we're left with that. Different things you can do with that, obviously. We're going to undo that. Next, elliptical marquee tool. Again, a selection tool, except this time it's a circle. So we can cut that out using our keyboard commands and paste it onto a new layer. And now you have a lovely circle cut out. All right, we're going to undo that. And just to reference this photo, this photo was actually taken by my wife, Alicia, for our travel and adventure blog, Terra Drift. And we also have a YouTube channel. So if you want to check that out, if you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and check that out. There's a link at the top of the video there. Definitely check it out. Subscribe. And if you're into 360, we recently did some 360 videos that are on there that are pretty cool of the Grand Canyon. Next, we're going to take a look at the single row marquee tool. Now, what this is, is a selection tool that only selects one pixel at a time, except because it's a single row, wherever you click, it's going to select that row. So I'm going to zoom in really close. You can see it's only selected a single row of pixels. Next, there's a single column marquee tool, which does the exact same thing, except, of course, with a column or vertically. It just makes a vertical selection. Next, we have the lasso tool. And the lasso tool is a selection tool that allows you to uh, freehand select. 
So we can just click and drag around these folks right here, or one of them. And then you have a very rough selection. Uh, we can then go back to our move tool and we can actually just cut them straight out of that and move them around. Next we have the polygonal lasso tool and what this does it's a freehand more or less selection tool but instead you have anchor points so by clicking I've just created an anchor point and I'm gonna pull out my selection tool and I'm gonna click again that makes another anchor click again another anchor and I can just keep going like that all the way around And then again, I can go to my move tool and just cut them straight out. Or I can paste them onto another layer, etc., etc. Next, we have a magnetic lasso tool. This one's really cool. So if we go to uh, this rock right here, the magnetic lasso tool is going to detect edges. And so you can actually click and it'll just try to find that edge, that contrast, and follow that all the way down. So you can see I made a mistake right there. It didn't hit the rock exactly, so I'm gonna hit my backspace or my delete, and it'll back up a little ways. And then I can go back and start over again with a little bit more accuracy this time. And then when I, once I've gone all the way around, I click on the original anchor just to close that selection. And then I can cut and paste that on a new layer, drag it around, replace it with something else, whatever I want to do. All right, next, we're done with our lasso tools. The next tool is the quick selection tool. Now how you use the quick selection tool is you want to click and drag over something that you want to select. So let's say I want to select this rock. It's going to attempt to roughly detect what area I want to select. And using contrast and color information, it's going to try to find the edges of that as you can see, it did not work terribly well here. I'm gonna deselect that. Let's find something with a little bit more contrast. Here, let's try this rock down here. So it more or less selected that rock, the top of that rock there. If we go to this logo here, we can actually try out this and get a little bit better result because these lines are so crisp. So I'm going to just click and drag there. And as you can see, that solid color has now been selected. So I'm gonna deselect that and go back to this image. Our next tool is the magic wand tool. Now this works in a similar fashion, but it's a one click selection tool. So for instance, if we wanted to select the sky, let's just single click and see what happens. So you can see because this is a gradient, the sky is a gradient, it's only been able to detect one slice of that uh, similar color. Now we can up the tolerance up here at the top. Let's set it to like 100 and we'll try it again. And now you can see it selected a much wider range of colors, but still within a certain gamut. So let's take that down to 50 and try it again. So now it's selected more of the sky, more of that blue color. And again, if we go over to our logo and we do uh, one click, 
you can see that it's selected those colors again. Now you see it's actually selected this here, this O, which is that blue. And if we hit contiguous up here and we try that again, you see that it's selected within the bounds of this object. So it's not selected this O and that's important to note in the future. So back to our image, we're gonna deselect that. We're done with our selection tool there, crop tool. So the crop tool obviously crops things. So up here we can select what ratio we wanna crop the image at. We can select a width, a height, and a resolution. Or we can select a preset such as an eight and a half by 11 photo at 300 PPI. If we select that, we can just kind of drag this around. And if you have a keyboard that has a number pad, you can either hit enter on the number pad or you can go up here and hit the check mark and it'll crop that for you. So I'm gonna undo that. Next up, we have the perspective crop tool. Now this is a really interesting tool because what it does is once you click and drag over what you wanna crop, you can grab the anchor points on the side and you can stretch them out, move them in and out. And what will happen is, let's say, I want to make this image, crop this image to this plane. I'm gonna hit okay. And it'll crop the image and stretch it out to match that perspective. Undo that, really interesting tool. The slice tool, you go around and you can make selections. And you can see it's um, by clicking and dragging, you can make these slices. This is a, a tool that's used in web design. And I can slice up an image so that when I save it, it can be uh, put back together in a website, kind of like a puzzle. And then if I go to my slice select tool, which is the next tool in there, I can select this particular slice that I made. Or if I have multiple slices that I've made like so, I can use that slice select tool and select them and move them around. I'm gonna undo those changes. Next up, we have the eyedropper tool. Now the eyedropper tool can be used to select a color and move it into your color palette. So I'm just gonna select that blue sky. And you can see down here in our color, our foreground color, that's the color we've just selected. It's very handy if you wanna try to match a color or get an idea for what the uh, hex value or RGB values are for a particular color. We're gonna skip over the 3D material eyedropper tool because we're not working with anything 3D at the moment, but we're gonna go down to our color sampler tool. And if we just single click, you can see this little dialogue comes up and number one, which is, this is number one here, it gives us our RGB value for that. Now, if we click on the little eyedropper in the dialog box, we can actually select if we wanna see lab color CMYK, HSB, web, or grayscale. Also 32 and 16 bit. So that's a handy thing to note if you're trying to sample multiple colors to see what kind of a color scheme is or something like that. Next, we're gonna to go to our ruler tool. Now the ruler tool is handy if you're trying to measure the distance between two objects. So if we zoom in here, let's say we want to measure between this person and these people up here. 
I'm just going to click and drag. And you can see line one, we have 1,873.31 pixels. And our angle is 15.3 degrees. So it'll even tell you your angle there. Let's go ahead and clear that. And we'll zoom back out. Now I'm going to free transform this and just skew it ever so slightly. Go back to our ruler tool. Now let's say we took a photo at an angle like this. We don't necessarily want to crop it, but we want to straighten it out. Well, take your ruler tool, click and drag, and try to match the horizon line with the line that you're creating. And then up here at the top, hit straighten layer, and it's going to straighten that back out. I didn't get it quite perfect, but you get the idea. All right, next we have the note tool. Now the note tool is great if you're collaborating or you just want to make a note for yourself. We'll just click here and this little notes dialog comes up. And we can say remove these people. And then you have that little note that whoever comes into this Photoshop file they'll see that and they can zoom in, they can click on it and they'll see the note here. You can even add an author up here at the top. Next we have the count tool and I'm actually going to go to another image for that. So the count tool is exactly what it sounds like. So let's say we want to count how many computers and electronic devices we have here. So we're just going to click and we have a little number one and actually adjust the marker size quite a bit and the label and we will change the color so we can see it a little bit better. Maybe something like bright red. Two, three, four, five, six. So as you can see, it's very straightforward. Just a simple tool for counting. Next we have the spot healing brush tool. Let's go back to our New Zealand photo here. And we're going to zoom in to these people here again. Make sure I have my layer selected. And with this tool, I'm just going to click and drag over this person. And as you can see, content aware, which is what the setting is for this currently. It filled in that space with image data it collected from the surrounding image. So we're just going to click and drag again over this person and see if it does as good of a job. And sure enough, they're gone. Now I do have a reflection here that I'll take care of real quick. Not bad. And sometimes if you click and try to get out the rest of that image, it works all right. I'm actually going to switch to the healing brush tool, which is the next tool. And this tool is based on a selection that you make. So I'm going to hold alt on my keyboard, alt option, click and make a selection in the water here. And then I'm going to use that selection to try and get rid of this reflection. And what it's going to do, it's going to try to copy that information over that person, that reflection. And it worked moderately well. It's a little smudgy. Um, I actually like how the spot healing brush tool did that a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and undo all of that. Now let's move on to our next tool, the patch tool. So with the patch tool, let's zoom into somebody else. It's kind of like the freehand marquee tool. We're going to just draw around these folks right here. And you have a choice. You can either do source or destination. So I'm going to select source. 
And what that's going to do is replace that selection with anything that I drag this other marquee on top of. And then it's going to blend it. So if I deselect that, you can see, you can sort of see the edges there, but it's done a pretty good job of getting rid of those people. I'm going to undo that. Next, I'm going to select destination. I'm going to grab this, and as you can see, I'm taking that image and moving it someplace else. So I'm going to move them right here. And it's going to try to blend that as best as it can. So when I deselect, it's done a pretty good job of copying them and blending the edges. I'm going to undo that. Next, we have Content Aware Move Tool. Now, this is actually very similar to the Patch Tool with a couple different options. Now, I'm going to drag them over and hit OK. Now, the difference being that it literally moves whatever you've moved and then replaces it with a uh, content aware fill. Undo that. The red eye tool. Now this should be fairly self-explanatory. We've had red eye tools in software for ages. I'm gonna take this old photo of myself with some serious red eye and I'm just gonna click right on my pupil. And it does a pretty good job out of the box getting rid of that red eye. There's some pupil size and uh, darken amount settings here that you can play with if it doesn't do what you want right out of the box. But that is the red eye tool. Next we have the brush tool. Very simple, you have all kinds of brushes you can select from. You can select the size, the softness of the edge on the brush. Right now it's down to maximum softness, if you will. I'm going to make a red brush and just paint. Very simple, very easy. Next, we have the pencil tool, which reminds me of something right out of Microsoft Paint. Just a very rudimentary, very basic kind of um, tool for drawing. All right, so next we're going to do the All right, so next we're going to select the color replacement tool. And let's try a different image here. We're going to select a bright red. And as you can see, it's attempting to find the edges on whatever I'm painting, and it's going to blend whatever color I've selected with the current color. We'll go ahead and undo that. Next we have the mixer brush tool. And with our red still selected, we'll just drag over this as you can see, it's trying to mix the two colors and you even have a little bit of a natural brush feel when you're doing that. This is a nice tool if you are doing some digital painting. Next we have the clone stamp tool. We're going to go back to this image. And to make a selection with the clone stamp tool, I am going to hold Alt, click right on that guy's head. And as you can see, it's giving me a preview of what I'm cloning. So I'll just click and drag and paint them into place over here. So of course with your brush settings you can again control the hardness 
and the size. And there are a lot of other things that I won't go over now that you can try, like sampling all layers and that sort of thing. And I'll do that. Next, we have the pattern stamp tool. And let me find a different image here. And let's say, for some strange reason, I'm going to make a new layer, by the way. For some strange reason, I want a pattern all over my face. Well, let's select a pattern. And then I'm going to just click and drag this pattern on my face. And it's just going to paint right on top of my face. Now, since I have this on a new layer, I'm going to go to my blending modes. And I'm going to select multiply. And that's going to make everything that is bright translucent. And then I'm going to take the opacity down quite a bit. And then, for some reason, I have this pattern all over my face. Not sure why exactly, but there it is. Next, we have the History Brush Tool. So, let's say that you made a few modifications. Uh, let's use the Spot Healing Brush Tool. Let's say we get rid of these guys, and we'll get rid of this guy. But you decide that you really only wanted to make a change by taking those people on the top of the hill out. So let's grab our history brush tool and just click right on top of those people there. And they're back. And it's left this area undisturbed, that guy further down the hill that we erased. Let's undo that. Next we have the art history brush tool. Now this is a really interesting tool that I don't really use, but what it does is it kind of artifies, if you will, uh, the image that you're working on. So you have different styles that you can select from. I'm going to select Dab. And I'm just going to work on this sky here. And it's just going to kind of dab that sky for me. And I'm going to click and drag over this area. And it's going to take the colors, the primary colors that it detects from your image. And it's going to create this kind of artistic rendering. Of course, I don't pretend to have any finesse when it comes to this tool, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Play with it. See if you like it. Next up is the eraser tool, and guess what? It erases things! But you can also go up here to your brushes and you can change the hardness. Have softer edges when you erase. You can also change the flow, the smoothness. Next up we have the background eraser tool. And we're gonna go to our logo for this. And if I just try to, if I get right on that edge, you can see that it's detecting that edge. And it's only erasing everything behind it or next to it. So oh, made a mistake there. So if the brush goes on top of that object too much, then it will start erasing it because it thinks you're targeting it. So that's the background eraser tool. Next we have the magic eraser tool. And this is uh, kind of similar to the magic wand tool. So it detects edges and colors, contrast basically, and it'll erase whatever you're clicking on and you can change the tolerance, of course. Or if we just click on the white. Let's undo that, let's uncheck contiguous. Try it again, and now you see it's erased the entire background. All right, so we're moving right along. Next we have the gradient tool. Now if you're a photographer, 
you may use a graduated filter from time to time. But inside of Photoshop, you can also use a gradient to replicate this filter. I'm going to create a new layer, make sure my colors are black and white there, and I'm going to click and drag from the top of my image all the way to the bottom. And then I'm going to go to my blending modes and set this to multiply. And as you can see, it's made the top very dark all the way to black, and then gets light again. So I'm going to decrease my opacity. And if you have a really bright sky and you want to try to even it out a little bit, you can use this technique. I'll delete that. Otherwise, you have some other settings here. You have a radial gradient, an angle gradient, a reflected gradient, and a diamond gradient. Very cool stuff. Next we have the paint bucket tool. And let's go back to our logo. Let's say I want to change this background very quickly. We'll go ahead and select, uh, let's select red just for fun. And we'll just single click. And as you can see, it's changed the whole background to red. And if we hit our contiguous setting there, a radial button and click, these two spots of white, three spots of white, have not been touched. Next we have the 3D material drop tool, but since we're not working with 3D materials, we're going to skip that and move on to our blur tool. So we're going to go to this image. Let's say, you know what, I don't know who this is, I want to blur his face out. I'm just going to click and move my mouse back and forth over his face, and it's going to blur that out. And the more I move back and forth over that object, it's going to blur it out more and more. Very nice. I'm going to undo that. Next, we have the Sharpen tool. Let's say, you know what, I want to sharpen up these eyes a little bit. Let's go ahead and click on those a couple times. You can see it's it really sharpens the detail. Ups the contrast a bit. Next, we have the smudge tool. So you say, you know what, I actually want this guy to look a little bit like, oh, I don't know, a vampire or pixie or something. I'm just going to take the smudge tool and I'm going to click and drag on his ear right here. Give him some funky pointed ears and pull his nose out a little bit and maybe lengthen his mouth. Now you can see that this is entirely destructive. It's really blurred the skin. So not a great way to use this tool. A better tool to use would be under Filter Liquify, but that is a tool for a different show. All right, next we're going to go to the Dodge tool. So if we zoom in to these eyes again, you can see if I click and drag over those eyes, the dodge tool is actually going to increase the brightness of those eyes. So it's kind of like a uh, spot treatment. Whiten the teeth a bit. That is super creepy, but that is what that tool does. So I'm just going to undo that. Next, we have the Burn Tool. The Burn Tool does the exact opposite of the Dodge Tool. So I'm just going to get in the eyes right there. Click and drag. Zoom back out, and now I have creepy black eyes. So it's just a tool for darkening. 
can darken my scalp slightly. Alright, next we have the sponge tool. And there are two different modes for the sponge tool. You can desaturate or saturate. So let's say I'm looking a little pale. I can saturate the skin, spot saturate the skin a little bit. I can make those cheeks a little more rosy. Or I can change this to desaturate and totally desaturate the eyes, for instance. Next we have the pen tool. So let's go back to our logo. So with my logo, let's say that I want to take this JPEG and I want to turn it into a vector shape. So the first step, I'm going to take my pen, I'm going to click at the top of my logo, right at that point, and then I'm going to click again at the bottom of this curve, but I'm going to hold that and I'm going to drag out and you can see it's creating a curve there. I'm going to match the curve of the logo and then I'm going to release. Next I'm going to hold Alt, I'm going to straighten it out, make it match my logo and then I'm going to click down here at this point, create another anchor point. And I'm just going to do this very quickly. Now we have a couple options. We can right click. We can say, I want to make a selection out of that. There's your selection. Or I can say, I want to define a custom shape. So there's your shape. You can save it and it'll be inside of Photoshop for you to use at a later time. And underneath the pen tool, there are a lot of other tools that you can use. However, if you go down here past the text tool to the path selection tool, you can take that path and just move it around easily. Or you can use the direct selection tool. And if we click off of that for a second, we can change the path anchor points and create something entirely different. So we're going to delete that. Next we're going to go to the horizontal type tool. It's exactly what it sounds like. I'm just going to click and start typing. You can switch to the move tool and just move that around. Delete that. Next we have the vertical type tool. Again, exactly what it sounds like. Now what about these other two tools, the vertical type and horizontal type mask tools? Well, let's try the horizontal mask tool. And we're going to hit OK. And as you see, it's just made a selection in the shape of the text. So then by going to our Select menu, we can go down to Transform Selection, and that will allow us to move this around. Hit OK. And now we can do a couple different things. We could add a mask to this layer. Or if we undo that, we can hit delete or backspace on our keyboard. Deselect that. And as you see, it's cut those letters out of our image. Moving on from the text tool, we have the shape tools, the rectangle tool. You can fill it with any color you like. You can also add a stroke to it, or just an outline, if you will. You can adjust the size of the outline. So right now we ha have it at 10 pixels. And we're just going to click and drag, and there's our shape. Now if you'd like to create a perfect square with this selected, 
just hold shift and drag, and there's your square. Next, you have the rounded rectangle tool. And if you go over to the radius here, that's going to change how rounded the corners are. So we're going to leave it at 100, and we're going to click and drag. And as you see, we have a 100 pixel radius on that corner. Delete that. Ellipse tool create circles. If you hold shift, you can make a perfect circle. Next we have the polygon tool. So if you go up here to sides, you can select how many sides you'd like your shape to have. So if we type in three, click and drag, we can create a triangle. Or if we add five, we can create a pentagon. or you can add 20. Next we have the line tool. And on the line tool, this is based on weight. So if we have a 50 pixel weighted line, I'm actually going to take the stroke off of this one. There's our 50 pixel line or we can do a five pixel line. There's our five pixel line. Custom shapes, these are shapes that you've either imported or are built inside of Photoshop. Photoshop comes with all of these shapes. We have a bunny rabbit here. And as you can see, each shape has anchor points so that you can mess around with. So I can go to my direct selection tool and just grab one of these anchor points and pull it out and modify these shapes as I choose. Next we have the hand tool. Now the hand tool, its whole purpose is to move your canvas around. Very simple. Rotate view tool. Let's zoom out a little bit. So let's say, oh, well, I wonder what this logo would look like if it were sideways. Well, you can take this tool and rotate it. And if you hold shift while you rotate, it'll actually lock into, I believe it's 15 degree increments, something like that. So there it is on its side. And then you can also reset the view. Next you have the magnifying glass or the zoom tool. By default, it's a magnifying glass. So you just click on what you want to magnify. If you hold Alt option on your keyboard, you can click and it will demagnify or zoom out. Next, we have our color panel here. These little guys here, they will change your colors back to the default black foreground, white background colors. You can also do this by hitting D on your keyboard. And if you'd like to switch the foreground and background colors, you can hit X. Below that, we have the quick selection mask tool. So once you have that selected, go ahead and take a brush and you can brush over top of whatever you want to mask out. And then if you click that again, it'll give you a selection. And then let's go down here to the layers panel and hit add layer mask and it'll mask that out. Lastly, we have some view options. We have standard screen mode, full screen mode with menu bar, and full screen mode. Now, I usually just use F for these because that's the keyboard shortcut. 
Now if we hit F once, you can see we still have our toolbars, but the user interface is slimmed down significantly. If we hit it again, we have full screen mode. This might be handy if you're painting and want little, as little distraction as possible. Hey guys, thanks for watching. That's all for now. Be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so you get notifications of future tutorials. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and let me know, what is your favorite tool in Photoshop? We'll see you next time.